We're here at Greenleaf's Hidden Lake site, just outside of Fort Gibson, and joining us today is Dr. Eric Rebeck, our extension entomologist. And Dr. Rebeck, we're coming out here to look at some research you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what we're doing? Yeah, absolutely, Casey. Thanks for having me. Um, so what we have in front of us is a Japanese beetle trap. Um, that trap, uh, it's a, what we call a weather vane trap. Um, it has two lures in there for attracting these beetles. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sex pheromone as well as an aggregation pheromone, uh, kind of calling in those beetles. Uh, and after a couple days of leaving it out in the field, um, we'll open this up in a second and we'll see what our bounty is. Okay, so before we get into that, before we open this up, let's talk a little bit about the Japanese beetle. Yeah. Um, so we're finding it more in eastern Oklahoma versus the rest of the state. Uh, yes, that's right, uh, because this beetle is actually invading from the east, um, making it its way westward into Oklahoma. It's been with us for about uh, about a decade or so now. And uh, this is part of the research to kind of figure out what's happening with at that invasion front uh, where these beetles are, are moving into new areas. And uh, it's a cooperative uh, project that I'm working on with uh, Dr. David Smitley at Michigan State University uh, looking for these parasites of Japanese beetle that might be effective in their biological control. Okay, so are they finding this parasite where it's well established, the beetle is well established already? Oh yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, some of those areas is where it's been well established for a long time. They're, they're having fewer and fewer problems with Japanese beetle um, and large, in due in large part to having these parasites and predators and parasitoids kind of working on their populations. Okay, so in essence, you're kind of tracking the parasite to see if it's here as well. For is this that... study, that's right. Okay, yes, all right. Yes. So Dr. Rebeck, is the Japanese beetle a problem for homeowners or for commercial situations? Who is affected by this? Sure, uh, both actually. Uh, the beetle itself, uh, the adults are defoliators. Uh, so they feed on uh, leaves, but they also will feed on fruits um, and, and vegetables. The, the larvae are uh, they're white grubs that feed below ground on the roots and they feed on about uh, 350 to 400 different species of plants and so um, any of these scenarios homeowners uh, vineyards uh, peach orchards corn fields um, these can all be susceptible to the beetle okay and so uh, do you recommend for people to trap for them or uh, depends on the situation okay. obviously we're using those uh, these for the uh, uh, for this research study that we're doing uh, they can be useful for monitoring um, especially uh, in a very sensitive of crop like peaches or in uh, grapes where uh, if you get any damage from their feeding on that on that fruit it's it's lost um, um, it's lost marketability so um, it's a good way to monitor and then determine when you want to spray. Homeowners, I don't recommend using these because what they end up doing is attracting more beetles than you would have in the landscape in the first place. Okay, that's not a good idea. Not so, at all. so I know they're related to the white grubs and the green June beetle. Um, so, do we need to treat them as a grub, or do we wait and treat them as an adult? Well, if they're a problem in your turf grass, yes, you can treat them then okay. um, because they are damaging um, the, the roots of those of those turf grasses where you might find them. Uh, but in terms of managing in the adults, that's the wrong way to do it because you're only treating what's in the immediate vicinity. Um, as you might be seeing, a lot of them are coming in, flying There's around. There's one, There's one right on my there, arm yeah. right now. Um, they're, so they're very strong flyers, uh -huh. uh, and they really do come in from miles around. And so just treating on the property, uh, just for those white grubs, really isn't going to put a dent in your control of the adult population. Okay, all right. And, and lastly, what do we treat these beetles with if we need to? Sure. Um, for the adult management, um, when it comes to insect Insecticides. We're primarily dealing with uh, broad spectrum chemicals, uh, contact insecticides that are going to provide a quick knockdown. Um, a lot of these are available to homeowners over the counter. Uh, things like Seven can be used. A wide variety of your uh, kind of general multi insect killer type of uh, pesticides can also be used for their management. Um, commercial growers uh, in a vineyard, for instance, they're going to have a lot more at their disposal, a lot more options. But again, uh, for managing the adults, we're primarily talking about uh, those broad spectrum from contact insecticides no matter where we're, we're dealing with this pest. So Dr. Rebeck, yeah. when should we be looking for the adult Japanese beetle in our garden? Yeah, so the adults are emerging and flying uh, peak of the growing season, so we're going to find them um, late June into early July, uh, all the way into early to mid-August. All right, all right, well shall we see what we have Yeah, in let's here? crack open should the trap here and see. One sure, right knock that there? one in there, right, there it okay. goes. <laughs> all right, so you just hold that bag open for me there. And, and it sounds like we might have a bee in we there. We might have too. a bee in there. It could also be a, a green June beetle. They also make a, a ruckus. And it's a bee. There's a lot in there. 
There are a lot in there. All right. All right. So now that we've got them, what are you going to do with these? Um, we'll bring them back to the lab, um, transport them on ice, and we'll put them in the freezer uh, to kill them all. And then I'll package them up. I'll put them in a, a saline solution, freeze that. Everything will be frozen, shipped frozen to uh, the lab up in Michigan State, uh, where when they're ready to get at them, they'll start dissecting the beetles um, and looking for those parasites on the inside. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Reback. We appreciate you sharing your research with us. Thanks for having me once again, Casey. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.